Well, we're gonna shoot us another baler video. Uh, as you can see, you got 33 inch bale in the chamber and it's all plugged to shit. And I'll show you why. This is the only problem I have with this baler. And this is a problem that I have had with every baler I've owned. Uh, and I mean every baler. Uh, both my deer balers had a 568, 569, and this baler. And then I had a, a RS-451, which was a Heston 8, 851 or 845, something like that. I don't remember what, what it trend, but they were, it was when Heston was still building hay equipment for Case, uh, before Case and New Holland merged. So, it is currently 3 o'clock in the morning, 3 a.m., this is our our hay. Broke right off. Broke right off. Uh, we don't have any humidity tonight. We don't have humidity during the day. Very rarely. Look at that. It just snaps right off. So... And these are smaller windrows, but they, it's so dry right now, they wouldn't... This is just powder, right here. And see, it's it's all the way up against this forming belt. Uh, it's got it all plugged up. I just started this build, and I've gone in. I haven't gone around at all. I've literally just... I've driven in two towers, and I know it's too dry to bale, but uh, it was, we had 6% humidity at 10 o'clock, or 8 o'clock usually when I leave to come bale, and we current, currently have 20% humidity, I don't even think we have 20, it might be 11. I think that's what it might be 11 percent I'll I'll double check it's either 11 or 20 which don't really make a hell of a difference uh, we can bail this stuff start bailing at 40 43 44 but it shatters it'll still shatter really bad get really dusty I'll show you the this right here. So, and I imagine most of you guys have seen this. Uh, you know, our core started okay. Uh, that's our that's our core. We got a we got a good core on it. Uh, so that's not that's not a problem. What our problem is. Is once we start forming that bale, you know, it got up 20. This one got up to about 20 something inches, and it uh, it just disintegrates. It just you're you're pulling that weed in, and it's not very big weed, and it just you know it's so dry that stuff just just boom just turns to nothing, and it it'll build up in front of your feeder like your feeder house and right behind your your pickup tines that kicks it up it'll it'll build up there and that stuff will just start beating it and it, it won't be it can't be shoving it up in there and then it, it's all done I uh Just looking at this, this is uh, we had to rake, we raked these windrows because they got about two inches of rain on them, and the hay's dry. It's dry hay. It's just powder dry, but that spot a little seemed a little uh, warm from bringing it into the baler. Uh, the very core of the bale, powder powder dry stuff. But it just, 
I mean, it's just, it's just shit. I mean, that's that's what it is. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lake. So, yeah, that's this probably had. That's about the only thing that's got anything to it. Just. And that's what happens, it shatters, and it won't hold together. So, you know, that's, that's not very fun. Because I'm, I'm over 30 minutes from my house, if not more. Uh, and, you know, it's, this is a custom job. So you gotta you gotta do everything you can to make it really, really good hay. But it's just not a not gonna do it on this one. It looks like tomorrow night we'll have a, we'll get up about 50% humidity. I'll be able to bail tomorrow night. You know, I got up at at two two o'clock to come to come here and got up drove here you know, it was, I, you know I was hoping that this we would be able to bail this stuff because this is a lot heavier than the other circles we've been on but it's just it's just not it's just we and a lot of what it is is we we didn't have any humidity at all and so this stuff is just, I mean, it's literally bone dry. So there's no way for us to kick it into the machine. And it, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't know what it, it there's not, just nothing we can do. We'll have to wait. This is where one of those steamers would be really nice. But, uh, and they're getting pretty popular. We'll check this hay right here real quick. I know the hay is the hay is super dry. Just re, I mean, it's really, really dry. Yeah, it's not. Definitely don't have any worries about. Yeah, it just splits it right in half. Now, could we bail this windrow? I don't know. It might be heavy enough where we could. But the problem with that is, is the minute we hit a light spot in the field and there wasn't enough hay rolling into that feeder house, it might just shatter and blow apart. And then we would lose a whole bale. And with this being, you know, custom deal I can't just be going to the edge of the field and dumping dumping powder that don't work so I guess I'm not I, I, I keep, I'm checking humidity on AccuWeather and doesn't look like I'll be uh, I won't have any humidity uh, we, we get to like 30% by uh, 8 in the morning, or it, it goes down by eight in the morning. So I just won't have enough humidity at all to bail tonight. Um, but tomorrow, hopefully, we'll get some. And I don't know. This may be because of the fire. Uh, that we had a bunch of smoke roll through, and I think that may be part of it. Uh, that there's a fire right now in, in Ute Park in northern New Mexico. I. We could see it when it was first started, the smoke come up, and it's just been, I think it may have rolled in over the top of us, maybe just super, super dry air, because you can smell it now. So I know that that smoke's right over the top of us, and maybe that's what it is. We're just, we're catching that super heated air and dry off that fire, and it's, that's probably why we don't have any humidity. I don't know, uh, th but that's kind of common for us here. We, 
we uh we've had uh i've had plenty of nights where i just didn't have any humidity at all it, it really it's hard on when you're bailing alfalfa because uh, it just turns to powder so anyways this is the only issue i have with this baler is super super dry hay that falls apart in the chamber and or in the in the pickup the feeder house but i've had that issue with every baler i've owned and so that's that's it that's the only issue i've had with this baler and this is about the perfect time to show you the crop conditions you know what is causing that uh and so yeah that's that's what that's at. I wonder what her moisture meter says on it. It's just been sitting there. Uh, it's so dry, it's not even reading. So it's under 8% moisture. Um, yeah. So it's under 8%. That tells you it's pretty damn dry. But it's aggravating, you know, and that, uh, that solid wind guard is kind of nice because it kicks that dust down in front of you, but when it when it just stops feeding, there's nothing you can do about it. And it gets really aggravating when you, you go 30 miles to a field and you know, you can't do anything. But I've got one little spot over here that's kind of a bottom off, I mean, real close to creek, about five or six windrows for 100 yards or so that I need to turn. There's just there's just a little string of damp hay through them. Uh, I mean, these were monster windrows, and they've been raked. Uh, but I'll kick them over tonight just so I've got something to do. I mean, I'm already up. And then I'll come back tomorrow night and bale hay. Is hopefully we got some humidity because... Uh, this needs to be done. I've got to get this bailed so I can take my baler home and go bail my hay. But you can see all these damn flies. We're right next to a feed yard. And it's just solid flies. But anyways, thanks for watching. I hope uh, if you do have any other questions at all about this baler, ask. I'm going to get my GoPro out and mount it on the somewhere. Or I'll have somebody, probably when I get home, and do my hay, I'll have somebody following me and I'll just, uh, I'll film, I'll have them film me bailing and that way you can see it working because it's pretty slick. So far, I'm extremely happy with it, but all right, we'll go from there.